Ready, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, people of Sutton. I've just come to share some amazing news with you today. How you doing, brother? Listen, like it says on the front here, look. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And this is the truth, and this is the word of truth. I'd just like to share um, some of the word of God with you, because it's so powerful. And I'm going to read from here. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. Um, the first day of week, Mary Magdalene and Mary went to the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his garment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There you shall see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy. And did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there they shall see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city, and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders, and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night, and stole him away while he slept. While he slept. This is what they tried to say that Jesus about Jesus, that, you know, his disciples come and stole him away, but he really died on the cross for my sins and for yours, for the sins of the world. And he was buried in the tomb, and three days later, he rose again from the grave, and he come to give us a new life. We're all slaves to sin, and look, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. And death, as in we're separated from God in this life, and for eternity, unless we repent of our sins, Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand and the kingdom of God is real God sitting on the throne and he sent his son Jesus over 2,000 years ago to show us how we're supposed to be that's why he's the way the truth and the life and he died on the cross for our sins so that we could be forgiven because like I say the wage of sin is death it's cut us off from God but Jesus died on the cross he paid the penalty that we could pay and we can never pay it and it's appointed unto my once to die and after to face the judgment and when we're dead one day we don't know when that's going to be but it's the reality of life you know, I could die today or next week, who knows? But God knows and he has a will for my life and for yours and his ways are better than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And he loves you so, so much. God bless you, mate. Jesus, Jesus is the king, mate. Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And he says, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Jesus is the prince of peace and, you know, he's the saviour of the world. He's the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And the good news is that for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And like this Christ, Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus is God in the flesh. But how are we supposed to believe in God if we never see him, if he's invisible? But all the prophets from the Bible in the Old Testament, they all prophesied about Jesus, that said he was going to come. And all the prophecies have been fulfilled. No one, there's never been a man like Jesus. He, they, they knew he was going to be here before he was alive. And I'll just quickly share this from Isaiah. This is... Um, I've got this big old Bible here with me, but someone blessed me with my ear. Alright, here we go. Who has believed our, our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall go up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him as we despised him and esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. And here's the bit, Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. 
He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. And Jesus come for the lost. I was lost but now I was found. And for the lost sheep. He wants to save us from our sins. And so we can have eternal life and have peace with God. And he's the only way to heaven. He's the way, the truth and the life. And he loves you so much more than you'll ever know. And you know, his love is unfailing love. And you know, God is a solid rock. It's impossible for God to lie. You know, God is light. And in, in him there's no darkness at all. And if you look around on the news, there's so much bad news and there's so much evil and wickedness going on. A lot of people are confused these days and the devil, he's the author of confusion and he's the father of lies. And he's come to steal, kill and destroy. And only Jesus can set you free from, from your life of sin. You can be forgiven and be born into a new life. He says, no man can see the kingdom of heaven unless he be born again. And that's born of the spirit. That's how we become a child of God. We have our sins forgiven and we have must repent. And we can't do it by ourselves, but God, you know, we just admit that we're a sinner. The Bible tells us, which is the word of God, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. And it's only by faith in your heart that, that you believe. And, you know, God knows our hearts. He created us and he has a will for our lives and we're made in his image. And he wants to have a relationship with you and for all of us, you know. Not, we don't deserve a relationship with our loving, amazing God in heaven because of our sins. It separated us. But Jesus came and, you know, as a man, God as in the flesh, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, and, the, and then the Word became flesh, which is Jesus, to prove to us. And this Bible is a living Word, and God speaks to us through the Bible, and He will lead us, teach us, and guide us. And that say, when you become a child of God, God the Holy Spirit lives inside us, and He, will, he promises that He will never leave us nor forsake us, and He will guide us into all truth and teach us all things. And I didn't used to like the Bible, I didn't used to care about sin or heaven and hell. But, you know, I had, I've had seen amazing miracles in my life. I've seen God do the impossible for me um, as a child. You know, I grew up, I just quickly, I won't go into too much detail, but I've seen amazing healing in the, it, it, thanks to God. And that's how I see my mum. She was, used to be an alcoholic and suffer from domestic violence all my life as a kid. And um, my stepdad used to hit my mum. I used to defend my mum as a small boy this big. And I pray that my mum will stop drinking and leave my stepdad. They happen for a long time and ultimately, because we've got to see his timing, we might pray for something, but that's what we've got to learn to trust him, because he knows best and his timing's perfect. And I see a miracle, my mum, you know, completely transformed, went to rehab, got, got us a new home, where I live just down the road in Bansy. I thought, wow, that's a miracle if I've ever seen one. And, and I'm a professional boxer now, thanks to God. Um, I'm undefeated, my name's Louis Lynn, I'm 10 fights, um, yeah, seven knockouts. And all thanks to Jesus, and again, faith comes from hearing, and hearing the word of God, and people aren't supposed to know about God if no one comes out to tell, to tell you about it. I'm here to tell you the truth because the truth will really set you free. You have a Father in heaven and He loves you so much that He sent His Son Jesus to die on the cross for your sin so that you can be forgiven. And He rose again and He's alive today. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father in heaven and He, he, he loves you. He, he wants us to repent of our sins, turn from our sins, admit that we're a sinner and we need saving. And in case you don't know, um, the Ten Commandments, that is sin and it's, you know, it's, it's a hard standard, the God standard is here for morality and what's right and wrong, God, he set it in, in stone, but you know, it's the truth and like I say, the, the Ten Commandments, if you've ever stole, told a lie, looked at a man or woman with lust in your heart, you, you, you commit, and, and we, all of us have sinned, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, so no one's perfect, no one's better than anyone else, and, and this preacher told me one time as well, it's true, heaven's not for good people and hell is for bad people. Heaven is for forgiven people and hell is a real place. And the Bible says, Jesus says, there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth um, where the flame will not go out. There'll be a lake of fire. And, and hell is not made for you and me or for any of us, but it's made for the devil and his angels. And that like say the devil comes to steal, kill and destroy. A lot of people, the devil, the God of this age is money. You know, that's who people serve. They live, they live for the money and the wealth and the fame. But the Bible tells us, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his own soul? And you know, the elite, the satanic, they worship Lucifer, you know, for the money, that's what they care about. That's why there's enough food to go around, but people are still starving and hungry because of greed and sin and all this wickedness. But if we just follow, have a relationship with our Heavenly Father who created us through Amen. Christ Jesus, we could be set free from a life of sin. And the purpose of life is not just to go, go to work every day, try and make as much money, go on holiday a few times a year, if we're fortunate enough to do that. We've got brothers and sisters in this country and all around the world, you know, they've got nothing, you know what I mean? But Jesus says, you know, we've got to be grateful for everything and give thanks to God in all circumstances. Because the Bible also tells us that blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Because, you know, Jesus, he knows our hearts and he made a way for us because he loves us that much. And, you know, his will is, is amazing. When you have a relationship with him, 
It's the best thing in the world, nothing compares, no money. Like I say, I'm a champion, I'm 10 fights undefeated. I've had some amazing victories, thanks to God, he's been with me in the ring, he's been with me. Every time I've been through uh, the deep waters, he's there, his word he never fails. And you know, his word is a, is a light to my path and a lamp to my feet. He will never leave us, nor forsake us. And it gives me great confidence in life about anything, because like the Bible says, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And you know, it's, it's not easy, um, you know, to be a Christian in, in these days because the, the sin and the temptation is everywhere, you know what I mean? And the devil, he's always on us and you know, he, he comes to tempt us in, into sin and that's why, you know, people they don't want to hear about they want to live how we want to live and do whatever, but you know, God's way is that it's the right way and you know, all sin is all assured of that, but Jesus, you know, he, he's, uh, he's reconciled us to God and he paid the penalty that we can never pay him. Like I say, when we stand before God one day, we don't know when that's going to be, but God's not going to look at our good deeds or anything else, our achievements, how much money we made, how much anything, nothing else matters, you know what I mean? All he's going to care is if we put our faith in his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, he shed his precious blood for you and there's power in the blood of Jesus, you know, he made me, like I say, it in everything, and not just in boxing, you know, because I could, you know, I could be in the car accident, I might not be able to box, but I'll always have God because he'll never leave me. And even like Whitney Houston, rest in peace, amazing singer, but she says, even if I was homeless, sleeping in Grand Central Station, you're sleeping with me. And that song that, um, that she sings, it's about a relationship with God. And, you know, like I say, his love is better than anything this world has to offer. And his peace, you know, transcends all understanding. I don't know what you're going through, but God is faithful and he hears our prayers. And, you know, the Bible says, <clears throat> You know, according to your faith, so shall it be. It's impossible to please God without having faith. How you doing, boy? Because 